Hey folks, welcome. We'll be starting in about uh, 45 seconds. Okay, folks, welcome uh, to this session on uh, using Brownie for Python with Python and uh, for Ethereum development. Uh, my name is Jamil, welcome. Um, so today we're gonna spend about uh, 90 minutes going uh, deep dive into how to use Python and Brownie to do some um, Ethereum development. Um, so I welcome you uh, to this session. It's gonna be hands-on, uh, it's gonna be somewhat technical. Uh, and so I kind of um, hope you guys are all ready for, for that. Um, and this is gonna kind of be an introductory thing. So if you're new to Brownie or if you're new to, um, you're coming from the truffle world and this is gonna be something that will, you can add to your kind of skill set. Um, so we're gonna be covering quite a bit uh, of stuff here. If you have any uh, support technical questions, um, Hector, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay, yeah, if you have any, uh, like, so while I'm, while I'm teaching and going through this stuff, if you get stuck somewhere, please reach out to Hector. He'll help you as much as he can. Um, and we're going to, we, we want to try to move the course forward uh, so that um, we can all move forward. If you're stuck on something that is really, like, really weird, like an operating system or whatever, we're, we're going to try to move forward still. Uh, but if it's a minor issue, just post it on chat. Um, and maybe somebody can help you with that. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take it from there um, to see who can, who can help you with that. If I know the answer, I'll kind of get you the answer. Now, uh, before I get started, um, I'm gonna do a three, four minute introduction on uh, what we're doing here. Um, and then Hector, as soon as I'm done here, I'll, you, you can, uh, I want you to tell, tell everybody about uh, for your background uh, for about 30 seconds. Um, number one, um, all of our events are available at blockchain101.com. The video for this will be available in probably in a couple of weeks um, on blockchain101.com. It'll be available uh, pretty much quickly in a day or two on our Slack. If you're not on our Slack group, uh, be sure to um, join our Slack. I put the, the Slack link there. I posted it already in the chat. So if you scroll up in the chat, you'll see that um, our Slack link is there. Uh, and I'll, I can post it again uh, one more time if anybody needs it uh, again. So uh, be sure to join our Slack and all kind of all our content is kind of pushed there and it's very educational uh, and people are uh, collaborating there. So um, we just announced this. This is still uh, not set in stone. We will have in Washington DC a CBDC masterclass. This is live in person, uh, not virtual, um, and then a CBDC conference. This is in April of next year. Um, and we are going to um, hold this during the week of the IMF spring meeting. So we're actually collaborating with a bunch of organizations um, and uh, we will be announcing this, but these are just make sure if you wanna attend this, keep that week empty, get your Amtrak train, tickets and all that for that week. Uh, we're gonna pin down the dates um, uh, uh, and firm up the dates over the next uh, one or two weeks and we'll make an announcement then. Uh, we have a bunch of upcoming courses. Uh, we have Understanding Stellar coming up in a, in, um, in a few weeks. We have the Stellar team coming in and explaining what Teller, Stellar is and how it works and what, what, what interesting new things they're doing. And I met with that, that team last week actually, um, and they're putting liquidity pools into the protocol. So some very exciting uh, very exciting stuff um, that I want them to kind of come and talk about. Um, and then we have uh, October 5th, our fourth session, Open Zeppelin session. Uh, this one is about, there's six sessions. If you missed three of them, we have the videos. 
This one is, is about governance and DAOs and all that. And how do you do that with smart contracts and how do you make sure you build uh, something in a secure way? So Opens Up is coming back uh, on the 5th to talk about that. Very important topic. Um, if you missed our DAO uh, sessions this past Saturday morning, two fantastic sessions on how to, uh, how to think about DAOs. Uh, from two fantastic individuals that came in and, and taught. Um, the videos of that also are available on Slack. Then we just announced this. We'll have um, somebody coming in, uh, and she's going to be talking about how you can do staking for good. What does that even mean? So everybody's interested in social impact and things like that. Um, can you actually stake your tokens and actually have uh, a social impact? The answer is yes. Obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be doing this talk. But um, we have somebody coming in to talk about that, um, and that's going to be an early morning, 8 a.m., thing for one hour. Uh, so be sure to join us for that. And then we have a blockchain 101, DeFi 101, and NFT 101. It's just kind of this massive one day uh, course. Uh, it broke into three parts uh, um, where we cover the, some, some of the fundamentals and we're getting a lot of demand for this kind of stuff uh, because a lot of people are entering the space. In the NFT 101, we're going to actually go off and build an NFT and see the, how that works. Uh, maybe we'll get to do that today if we get time to do that today with code here, this will actually be through OpenSea and concepts and things like that, uh, more for business people. And then we're gonna have a, uh, a group of instructors come in, three instructors coming in to talk about how you can raise uh, up to $5 million without necessarily giving up equity. You could do equity crowdfunding or you could do debt crowdfunding or you could do token-based crowdfunding. So we have the CFPA, which is a crowdfunding professional association coming in, partnering with us to come and tell you how to raise um, all this, uh, all this money, if you want, um, at, at least it's an option, and you can get educated about the legal requirements. How do you go about doing that? How do you, how do you get your customers? How do you get your investors, and all of that, right? So, um, okay. And then we have yield farming. We have Nathan Windsor coming in to talk about uh, yield farming. If you want to do some yield farming, and uh, and figure out how to, hey, I've got all these tokens sitting around. I want to maybe pick up and make some money. Um, how to do that. We have Nathan coming in to talk about that on the 26th. Um, and Cello, which is big now uh, um, in, in the CBDC space, they're coming in and, and explain what their platform is about. Um, they just made an announcement about a sandbox that they, they created, um, and they're doing some work with the Monetary uh, Authority of Singapore, some, some exciting stuff. We have some, some of their key people coming in to give, give a talk. And then we have a bunch of technical talks. We have a blockchain analytics a person that created a blockchain um, uh, analytics framework, open source, is going to come and explain how to use it. And we have this course today. Uh, and then we have this 10-part series uh, over 12 weeks. So learn Python by learning blockchain. You learn both, right? So you use Python to actually build a blockchain. You don't need to have any Python knowledge. You don't even need to have blockchain knowledge. You're going to learn both by playing with both interchangeable right, in an interchangeable way, right? So you'll use Python to build a blockchain and use Python to inspect live mainnet data and pull that down and analyze it and, and process learn about Python libraries and Python loops and all that kind of stuff, right? So um, that's gonna be exciting. That starts on the 27th. Um, and Hector and I will be both teaching that. Hector will be uh, um, uh, providing support and I will be leading the, the curriculum design um, and that portion, and then there's going to be homework. Hector will be kind of the person that's going to uh, uh, make sure you guys do your homework and things like that if you uh, choose to enjoy uh, to enjoy uh, to join us. Right? Then we have Solana Bootcamp. This may get rescheduled because of Solana's recent uh, issues. They all of their people have kind of like disappeared, um, and so we might reschedule this. But we will we do plan to have a bootcamp. This is a hands-on technical thing. How do I do? How do I build a DAP on Solana? And that's gonna that's gonna come. Uh, come soon, if not the November 6th, we will uh, make the right arrangement so that it, it does come to us uh, pretty quickly. We just announced this. Um, we have uh, an instructor, instructor from Consensus, a guest instructor from Consensus. He's a co-founder of a um, uh, DeFi protocol coming in. And this is really an important topic. Um, if you put up, uh, if you deploy a smart contract and all of a sudden you want to upgrade it, obviously you can't because it's immutable, but there's ways to do that, right? There's ways to build what's called proxies where you can actually upgrade your smart contract and the users of the smart contract don't know the difference, right? So um, he's going to come in, his name is Francis, he's going to come in and talk about how do you do that? What are your considerations um, and what to think about? And we'll see later today, Open Zeppelin has some options, but he's gonna come and explain because they're complex, what those options might mean. Um, um, if you wanna 
and this is something that everybody should be doing if you're going to be building smart contracts you should be thinking about upgradability because the minute you have to upgrade and create a new smart contract it's very difficult to get everybody to shift over and move all that liquidity over and all that it's 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 not like you're just doing an upgrade of software going from version one to two this is like you're moving people's money around it's like you know a bank a bank buying another bank out kind of a deal it's very very um uh, high maintenance type of stuff. So this is really useful. Um, and I really look forward to this talk. We're partnering with ethbuilders.nyc, which is um, an Ethereum oriented uh, community here in New York City that um, is a fantastic place to learn uh, from those guys as well. We've got a, a major conference coming up, DeFiCon. This was the largest DeFi conference this past March. We're gonna do it again this coming March, but this time it will be hybrid in person. Uh, meaning that we will have both uh, live streaming and then this will be at a conference. We think at a very large conference, we expect a couple thousand people. Um, so if you want to get the ticket for this right now, in person is 10 bucks. It's going to go up next week to a hundred bucks. And then after that 500 bucks, and by January, it's going to be a thousand bucks, right? And then virtual um, for now is free as well um, at, this, at this point. Uh, if you want to sign up, just go to defycon.co. Okay, and then we have this YouTube channel we launched called Sci DeFi, which is the science of DeFi. Bunch of videos from DeFiCon we posted up, really educational stuff. If you really want to learn about DeFi, this is really the place to go, right? Um, you got a ton of material from the very people that are creating, uh, creating this stuff, right? So, um, and, and this in these videos, I've interviewed a lot of these people, um, and we post those videos. So you got basically the creator Uma Hart Alambur is here, the creator of DYDX. Um, Anth Antonio Giuliano, the people from Compound are there, people from Ave are there, all of that. Then we get people from Chainlink, et cetera, all, all have uh, participated. Okay, all right, um, so we're gonna get started. Um, so, uh, so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna cover, um, and I just created this material, so there might be some typos here and there. So I apologize, I just created this within the past few hours, this content. Um, I've been working with Brownie for, for, for uh, for about a couple months and I, I really love it. I just dumped everything else that I'm doing. I'm using like Truffle, I'm done with it. Um, I, I, lo I love uh, Python and I think this is a fantastic toolkit and I wanna see it kind of grow. So we're gonna be covering how to build um, uh, Ethereum apps with using Brownie. Um, a little bit about me, I do a couple of different things. Um, I run a company called Chainhouse um, I run this meetup group, which is now the largest blockchain meetup group, probably in the East Coast, if not in the U.S. Um, I, I run a think tank called the CBC Think Tank. You go to cbctt.com. Um, I'm a professor at Columbia Business School. I, I teach uh, uh, graduate level uh, uh, blockchain, uh, the business side of it. I also teach at NYU and CUNY. I teach tech, the technical side of AI and machine learning and coding. And actually, Hector uh, was one of my students the previous semester. Um, and I do a bunch of other, other things. My bio is up on jamil.io. You're welcome to, to check it out. Um, and it's all there. Now, what are we gonna what are we gonna accomplish today? There's a lot that we're gonna accomplish. It's gonna be very important that you guys uh, pay attention and stick with me as we progress because I'm gonna start with very, very simple things. And then it's gonna get a little bit more complex and a little bit more involved. Not terribly complex because this is still a one-on-one, um, uh, but this is enough for you to say, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I know how to use Brownie and I'm gonna be using this, right? So uh, I'm assuming you guys are somewhat familiar with Python or are ready to be familiar with Python. There's not a lot of code here. Maybe the largest piece of code is about four or five lines of code. We do use some Solidity smart contracts. I will explain some of what they what they do. It should be some of it should be kind of clear if you're used to coding and looking at like object oriented code. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of build some uh, applications and push them out onto uh, onto a um, uh, Ethereum chain. And if we have time, I will try to push it out to Rinkeby. Um, and then even if we do have time, I'm, I'm willing to push it out to the mainnet and, you know, spend 30 cents or a dollar or whatever it is to, to spend, uh, get it out there. But if we have time, but um, switching from like a local Ethereum to, to um, Rinkeby, as you see with Brownie is very, very simple. Maybe we'll get to that. Um, and I'll show you that, um, how to do that. Um, if we have time, um, so I think we will. Okay. So what are, what are we what, what are we going to try to accomplish today? Um, um, we're going to first of all we're going to I'm going to give you an overview of Ganache, right? So a lot of people don't really understand Ganache, and so 
uh, I want to make sure that you understand what ganache is. Uh, there's different types of ganache, all right, but uh, we're going to use a specific one, and then we're going to get into Brownie basics. We're actually going to get into the command line, and I'm going to give you a command. You can execute it. You're going to see what it does. We're going to talk about it. Then we're going to move to the next command, right? And I'm starting off from my style of teaching is to start with the basics and then grow into the complex things. And so that you then don't fall behind. You're like, oh, I don't understand why it's doing this. I go in small increments. And then when we get to the finish line, you're like, ah, I think I've a, I, I really understand this thing, right? Okay. So, um, so we'll get to brownie basics, some, some basic commands, um, and then we'll build a simple smart contract, right? So it does a very, very simple thing. It stores a string, okay? Um, and then we're gonna deploy that smart contract and we're gonna interact with that smart contract using brownie, right? So I don't have to use anything else but brownie to be able to start to interact with that smart contract. Then I'm gonna show you how you can create scripts. This is in Python to do and automate certain things um, that brownie does. And this is a huge time saver. I really love this feature of, of Brownie. I built these massive scripts um, um, and they're very, very useful. We're gonna build very simple scripts here. Uh, once you get the feel for how it works, you're like, ah, oh, leave me alone. I'm gonna go off and build it myself. And then we're gonna do an ERC20 deep dive, right? So um, we're gonna build an ERC20 token um, and we're gonna add certain features to the ERC20 tokens that are typically not talked about elsewhere. Like for example, minting and burning and pausing and um, snapshots, right? So these kind of things that we can do, you can do with ERC-20. A lot of people don't talk about these. We're gonna actually do that. I'm gonna show you how it works, right? Um, and then um, if we have time, uh, I'm gonna try to deploy it to Rinkeby. That requires the, that you have MetaMask and we're gonna, well, or some uh, account on Rinkeby um, and uh, faucet uh, with, with, with um, ring could be ether on it and stuff like that. Uh, the setup of that takes a little bit more, it's a little bit more involved and then there's private keys involved and all that. Uh, but if we have time, we'll, we'll get into that um, or we'll just come back to, into another session um, and, and get into that and doing that, okay? So um, any questions is, in terms of installation, uh, what we need, what you need to have is you need to have Python uh, 3.9. 3 uh, you should have Ganache uh, installed, the GUI version installed. Right. Um, those are those are those are your bare minimums. Right. Um, and then you should have um, uh, uh, Brownie installed. You just basically do pip install ETH Brownie. OK, the pip X stuff didn't work for me a long time ago. I just did pip install ETH Brownie and boom, I had it. Um, so um, if you don't have those three fundamental things installed, please start installing now. Or make sure you have it and minimum. That's that's what you need. OK. All right, so I did see a, a question. Oh yeah, Hector answered. Thank you, Hector. Okay, so um, Hector, before you before I start, uh, can you talk about a little bit about yourself? Take 30 seconds. Yep, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Hector Santana. Um, I currently work as a finance and data science associate at a distressed hedge fund. I uh, deploy Python-based solutions for a variety of different things there. And I also do fund accounting and run the middle office, back office functions. Um, I was Jimmy's student last semester in his advanced uh, programming class, um, doing a, my master's in data science at CUNY SPS. And um, I'm also a DeFi analyst with Chainhouse. I taught the five course, the five series, Solidity series. Um, just recently, um, and we just posted that up on video lib. If you missed it, so go check it out. Thank you, thank you, Hector. Fantastic. Okay, all right. So we're gonna get started. First thing we're gonna do is understand some of the fundamentals, right? These are these are important things. In order for us to deploy a smart contract and all that kind of stuff, we need a blockchain, right? So we need something to deploy to, right? So. Um, Ganache is exactly that, right? A Ganache allows us to run a local version of the Ethereum blockchain, right? And it comes in two flavors. There's a command line version of it where you can do stuff on the command line and that, that Ethereum chain, which Ganache runs and exists only for the duration of the command. So when you execute a command, an Ethereum chain or, or, or a simulation of an Ethereum chain launches and it executes a command and then it dies, right? And, and that's not what we want. What we want here is we want a, an Ethereum chain on our computer running so that we can play with it and do stuff and deploy smart contracts and interact with that, with that, with that smart, with those smart contracts that we deploy and Ganache does that for us, okay? So um, I'm gonna assume people here have installed Ganache. If not, 
just go, just Google Ethereum Ganache. It'll take you to the website um, and install it. Um, and once you install it, um, the first thing, the first screen that you're going to see is something like this. Okay, make sure you have the right version number. It, the latest version number is 254, right? You're going to see something like this. Um, and this is a bunch of uh, configs that you can create, like Workspace is a bunch of configs. So you can say, hey, I want an Ethereum chain that runs on this port, or I want an Ethereum chain that runs on that port. But depending on which config I want, I'm going to run this one this time, then I'm going to shut that down, and I'm running this one that one at this time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create our own uh, workspace, and I'm going to show you how to, how to do it. Um, and then I'm going to kind of like walk you through the process. And then we're going to break a few things on purpose to see the outcome. Uh, so you get kind of familiar with, uh, with the, um, with Ganache. Okay. So, and if there, you have a question, uh, maybe I'm moving, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm skipping some important information. Uh, please let me know. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do this on my computer as well, is uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get a space like this. Right. I'm going to get this is my uh, uh, real computer. Right. Um, and I'm going to hit new workspace. OK, everybody have that. So you're going to hit new workspace and you're going to get a screen like this. Right. And you're going to type in Brownie 101. All right. So that's the workspace that we're going to call it Brownie 101. I'm going to create an Ethereum chain that I'm going to uh, the configuration. I'm going to call Brownie 101. OK. All right. So if you can't install with PIP X, try PIP. Just try PIP install. ETH Brownie. So just try that. Pip install ETH Brownie. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to start this Ganache up. And uh, before I, I start it, I'm going to show you a couple of important parameters. It's important to remember this because they're going to it's going to come back later. Right. I'm going to configure here my uh, Ethereum chain. Right. This is simulated Ethereum chain. What I want to make sure is when I click on server that it says 000, zero here, all interfaces is 000. zero zero. I'm not using one two seven, right? I pick all zero zero. I can pick any port number, but the default is fine, seven five four five, and the network ID is five seven seven. Okay, so that's important to remember. Write these three numbers, these two numbers down. Write them down somewhere if it's not the default number that you're using, right? And just for simulation purposes, right? Just for simulation purposes, I, what I want you guys to do um, is um, make sure that this is turned on, all right? Auto mining is turned on, okay? Sorry, we're gonna turn it off. So it's gonna be like this. So you're not gonna auto mine, okay? We're gonna make the Ethereum chain mine, right? So when you turn it off like this, there is a time that you could specify for a new block to be created. Okay, so we're gonna leave it at 30 seconds and I'm gonna save the workspace. Okay, once I save the workspace, I get a bunch of accounts, right? And, and I wanna make sure everybody has that, okay? So after you save the workspace and the, your account's addresses are gonna differ, right? My account addresses are, diff are gonna differ. These are all random. There's a bunch of things that are occurring on this screen, right? So first of all, first of all, um, I've got I've got a bunch of accounts here, right? I've got ten accounts here, um, and each of these fake accounts have hundred ETH sitting inside of them. Okay, there's hundred ETH inside of all of these, right? Uh, and this is the account address, right? This is the account balance. Okay, if I go to blocks, if I go to blocks, I click on blocks, I can see blocks are being mined right now. So they're being mined every 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, another block is going to pop up here. Okay. So um, let me just switch to my slides here, right? In, in this slide here, I was up to block three before I took the screenshot. So you're going to see, see this to continue to, to get larger and larger and larger. We don't really want that for testing purposes, but I really, really just did this as a, for a demonstration so that you can see that this is actually an Ethereum chain mining and doing it's not real mining, but it's just actually just simulating the idea of creation of a block creation occurring every 30 seconds. Okay. So now that we did that, uh, what I want you guys to do, we're going to kind of get rid of this. So what you're going to do is um, you're going to go here, right? You're going to go to the setting things here. Okay. Um, and 
uh, we're going to switch back to, we're going to switch back to turning off the auto mine. Okay, I turn off the auto mine. So now that I turn off the auto mine, right, what happens is my blocks, I'm going to save and restart. My blocks are static now. They don't, I don't, I don't create any more blocks. So when do I create blocks? And when, do, when are the blocks created? They're created when transactions are sent to this chain. All right, so I'm not running a chain. And if I send a transaction to the chain, then that transaction is put into a new block. And then the Ethereum chain waits, right? There is no more mining. That's more efficient for my purposes as a developer, unless I'm trying to simulate and trying to do something like a flash loan and I'm trying to build that and figure out what things need to happen within a block and all that kind of stuff, right? But for my purposes, I actually don't care what block number um, my, my smart contract is in or what block number it's executed on uh, in terms of the states, the change in the value of that smart contract. I don't really care. So I can switch, I can turn off that auto mining feature, but I wanted you to see it. Uh, so now it's off, but if I, when I turn it on, Right, that's when you can see the fact that um, it's actually a live Ethereum simulation. Okay. Any questions? All right. Any questions on that? All right. So <clears throat> the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build another chain. All right. So this one that we just built was for 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 fun. We're gonna build in one more. So you're gonna go back to um, your your um, Ganache and you go to click on switch, right? And switch is going to bring you back here. Switch is going to bring you back to the workspaces. Okay. You're going to come back to the work workspaces. And this time you're going to click on the trash bin. So the, this config that we just sent us uh, uh, created, we're going to delete it. Right. So I'm going to delete that and I remove. Okay. And it's gone. And I'm going to create a new workspace with some different configs this time. Okay. So I'm going to hit new workspace again. Again, I'm going to call it Brownie 101. I'm going to call it Brownie 101. Okay. But this time the accounts and keys, right? I'm going to say that the, the account balance is not going to be a hundred. It's going to be a thousand. And I only want five accounts. Okay. I only am going to create five accounts. All right. <clears throat> so just make that change. And you'll see why we're doing this, right? There's a reason for that, okay? All right, so try not to use pip in your VS Code terminal. Try to do it in, a, in, your, in your operating system terminal, All right? So, so I save and I've got a brand new chain working again, right? This is, the previous one is gone, right? So the previous one is gone. I deleted it. I have a brand new one. Right, a thousand, a thousand ETH per uh, account, and now I have five accounts. Right, this is my screenshot from you know previously, but this is the live one right here. Now I've got five of them. This is a cleaner view. I can see all of my accounts in, in on, on one screen. Okay, just want to make sure everybody has this. How are we doing? Yeah, auto mine. Auto mine is going to be. Um, this is the setting for auto mine here. Okay. This is the setting for auto mine. Okay. So process transaction inst instantaneously and zero, 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 zero here. Okay. Port number seven, five, four, five, five, seven, seven. Leave it to the defaults. No, that's not the host name. A host name is not an IP address. A host name is a word. So we're not going to, we're not, this doesn't have a host name at this point. Okay. It has an IP address, which is your local host. Right, so it's 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 your local interface. Okay. Yeah, for now, there's different reasons why you would use this and why you would use that. For this, sometimes it's difficult to connect to, right? So there's been people that have that set this and they can't connect to the to their to the ganache. So this one will work across the board. I'm just gonna do the widest thing here with all interfaces, right? So then we don't have any issues with connections and things like that. Okay. All right. So once you have this, once you have this, you have your accounts and keys will be a hundred ETH. Once you start it, you can't change the account and keys, but once you start, 
uh, once you um, have created it, it you, can't, you can't change them, but you can change other parameters and then you just restart. All right, so I have my five accounts with a thousand ETH um, in them, okay? So there's no concept of host name at this stage. Like we're not talking about a host name or anything like that at this point. I don't know why that's coming up. We're not talking about a host name at all at this stage, right? So the only thing that you're doing, the only thing that you're doing here is picking this, right? Zero, 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 and that's it. And then the accounts, a thousand ETH for five accounts, and that's it, okay? Does everybody have this on Ganache? How, how are we doing? Yep, okay, great, fantastic. All right, good, I need feedback because I need to know where you guys are, okay? Fantastic, okay, great. So, um, all right, so we've got a simulated Ethereum chain running our computer. It has a user interface. That is what, what's useful about this, right? So I can always look at this, and if I'm manipulating the, the, the state of the Ethereum chain, if I'm doing stuff to it, I can always go back and look at this user interface, like, well, what's the status of things, right? And that's why we, we have this, right? We're not going to use a command line version of Kanash because then we can't see what's happening underneath necessarily, okay? So this, this is there. Now what we do is we could put this aside for now. We're going to come back to Ganache in a bit. That should give you a good overview of Ganache. And you can see here, um, the blocks are here. And I turned off, we turned off the, the, the auto mining thing, right? So blocks are not being produced anymore. We can see transactions here and it, there have been no transactions. We can see contracts here. There's none of that, right? And there's some events and stuff like that. We will come back to these three here a little bit later because we're going to do, we're going to build some activity here. There'll be some activity that we'll get to see uh, occurring um, on the Ganache chain, okay? So um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to play with a little bit with Brownie and then we're going to converge Brownie and Ganache a bit, okay? So um, so what is what is Brownie, right? Let's start from the basics. What is, what is Brownie? It's basically a toolkit, right? It's basically a framework that allows you to uh, deploy and control and test smart contracts a lot more easily than you would, let's say, using some other other way, like uh, using Web3 directly or things like that, right? So you need some way to communicate with a blockchain and push your smart contract code to the blockchain um, and test for things and query the smart contract and call the smart contract. You need some tools to do that. You could do it in a very, very raw way. You can call RPCs and things like that, but that's just very difficult to do. It's a lot of work. And Brownie makes it very, very easy to do that. It gives you this kind of abstraction and allows you to interact um, with um, your smart contracts, right? The equivalent of it is Truffle. And I've used Truffle quite a bit. It was kind of like the, it was the kind of the, the, um, the default in, 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 the, in the Ethereum world, in the Solidity world two years ago, but it's kind of changed. There's Brownie, now there's Hard Hat, um, and they're kind of like, uh, competing with, with Truffle. Um, I, I really like Brownie because I, I've been using Python for like five years. Uh, I've been using JavaScript for much longer, even longer than that, using JavaScript for 10, 15 years probably. Um, but um, I don't like JavaScript. I just don't like it. Um, as much as I've tried to like it, I, I don't. Um, and Python, I really, really enjoy. Okay, so uh, if you like pr Python or if you're new to Solidity development and you're picking a toolkit, Brownie is a really nice way to start because it's very easy to get familiar with Python very quickly. Okay, so, all right, so, all right, so um, this is what I want you guys to do. You're gonna open up your terminal, all right? You're gonna go to, you're gonna go to a terminal, right? Um, and you're gonna do a version check, right? You're gonna make sure you have the right version of Python. And the way that you do that is this, right? Python uppercase V. And then I do brownie, right? I do brownie dash dash version, uh, and this should be your version number, okay? So any version of Python 3.9 and above, or even 3.8 or above is fine. And then brownie, the latest version is 16.4. I think they just came out with a release. It was 16.3 a couple of days ago. Um, but any, any 16.3 is fine, right? So just make sure you're here. The most important thing is you should not be using Python 2, right? So Python 2 is a completely different parallel universe of Python that they're not compatible across, right? So they don't, they don't, they don't work together. So make sure you have Python 3, 8 or above um, and the right brownie here. 
Okay. So uh, with that version check in place, make sure you have that. Um, and I will take a break around 7.10 for about five minutes or seven minutes. Um, so I can get something to drink. In the meantime, in that time, if you need to like install something, whatever, um, if you can wait that long, please, please do so. And uh, Hector will be here to support you. Okay. Now, we're going to look at some of the things that Brownie provides us. First of all, I can run uh, this command called Brownie and networks list. And the way the Brownie is, it's first a, a, a noun, like what am I, what do I want? And then a verb. Well, I want to know about my networks. A network is like uh, ganache and rinkaby and things like that. Okay, right. I want to know what networks is Brownie aware of out of the box by merely installing Brownie. Brownie is aware of certain networks. Okay, so uh, if I do that, I'm going to see this nice little list um, of networks that are available. Okay. Oh, you want to make, uh, let me see how to make the font bigger. Uh, let's see here. Is that better? Does that help, Henry? Okay, great. Okay, so, all right. So this is a list that Brownie is aware of. So it knows that the Ethereum mainnet exists um, via the Infura, which is a cloud provider for nodes. And the moniker that you would use to connect to it is called is, is mainnet. Uh, and there's a bunch of them that you will put in here. What you don't have right now, if you have a fresh install, is this one right here, which we're going to add. Okay, I'm going to show you how to add that in. This one means I'm going to point to the ganache on my computer. So I made Brownie aware of the ganache on running on my computer. By default, Brownie is not aware of it, okay? By default, Brownie is aware of everything else here, everything else here except this one right here, okay? So and we're going to add that. But the point here is to, is to show you it's even aware of a Polygon network, the XDI network, and things like that. And you can start interacting with those networks out of the box, okay? That's, that's something that's um, uh, pretty fantastic, okay? So I can produce a networks list. I can also produce an accounts list, right? I can register accounts with Brownie. Say, well, I have an account, uh, an Ethereum account, and I want to register the accounts. And here's my list of accounts. Um, and right now, I don't have any accounts registered. So it's going to say zero. I will show you later today, if we have time, how to register an account. Um, a real account on the, let's say, on mainnet or testnet that you would register with Brownie and say, now I want to communicate or I want to do tr transactions and things like that. Um, it's you can technically build a trading system using Brownie if you wanted to, right? So it's, it's technically possible. Okay. So you cannot use Python 2. You have to use Python 3, Jamie. Yep. You have to use Python 3. So um, you have to make sure Python 3 is installed. What you should try to do if you install this, try, try to run Python 3 command. Right, and see if that's available. Okay, uh, Hector, are you there? Yep, I'm right here. Yeah, yeah. I think you should monitor the chat. Yeah. Okay. People, yeah, people are coming up with some simple questions. Okay, so um, I have this accounts list, and then there's a package manager. I can add on additional things to to my Brownie uh, installation, All right, and I'm going to do Brownie PM. PM stands package manager. And I do a PM list. Right, and there's a bunch of packages that I do have installed. You may not have any installed, um, but um, I have, for example, Open Zeppelin and some Chainlink stuff installed. Okay, um, we will install up. We will install Open Zeppelin together. So if you don't have anything in your in your PM list, don't worry about it. We're going to install it. The point is to to know that these commands, you can pull down a list of networks that Brownie's aware of. You can pull down a list of accounts that Brownie's aware of. Uh, or a list of packages that Brownie's aware of. And if it's not aware of it, you can register, right? You can add that in. And we're gonna show you that um, a little bit later, right? So these are the things that, these are the assets that you can you can work with uh, when working with, Brown, with Brownie, okay? All right, so uh, now we're gonna add Ganache, okay? So remember in my network list, I have this Ganache GUI here. I gave it a moniker of Ganache-GUI. You may not have that, um, to add that in, 
you're going to run this command. And there it is. Remember, I told you to remember the port number um, and the chain ID. You're going to have to use it there. Okay. And I'm going to copy and paste this command and, and put it um, in the chat so you can paste it into your terminal yourself. Okay. And we'll give you guys 30 seconds to do that. So once you have that, you're basically saying, saying to Ganache, hey, look, I got this. Sorry, you're saying to Brownie, hey, I've got this Ganache here. Can you please recognize it? And these are the parameters that you need to know in order to connect to it. Okay. And once I do that, like once I put that command in, I can do a Brownie network list. I should see this. So the, if this command that you run here, the networks add command is successful. Perfect. There you go. That's excellent. All right, Raj, you got it. So you should get a success uh, response like you see in the chat right now. So that means Brownie now is aware of the ganache um, that you have running on your computer. Huzzah, there we go. All right. It's a big victory. I know it's a big victory. It took me a while to figure it out because uh, the docs aren't that great. Um, so I'm sharing with you um, the results of lots of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, you're gonna, so Kathy, you're gonna add it, right? So the command I just pasted adds it, right? So right now, Ganache under Ethereum is not fine. You don't wanna mess with that. You wanna, you wanna add this here. So this one's gonna get added here, okay? Perfect, excellent. Okay, um, all right, I'm hoping everybody has that. Um, and now once, once you have that, you again, put this command in, you should see um, you have the live entry there. Right? So this entry now exists there. Okay, and I'm assuming everybody has that. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna move forward with this, okay? Are we good? Should we move forward? Should I move to the next step? Yep, okay. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up what's called the Brownie console. The console is a way for us to interact with Brownie um, in a command line way, but this console is special, right? It's a special console. One, it understands Python. Two, it connects with Ganache GUI. So I issue this command here. I'm not gonna paste it. I'm gonna let you guys type it so that you can, your, your, your muscle memory builds, right? So I'm gonna type it here as well. Say Brownie console network, right, network right, Ganache, GUI, or whatever name that you gave it, whatever moniker you, that you gave it, okay? And you get a REPL, exactly. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna hit that and I get a REPL, okay? If you're if coming from the Python world, at this point, you should be like screaming with joy, right? I, I had tear, I had tear come down like, whoa, you know, this is it. I found, I found, I found what I'm looking for. Okay, so you got that. That should be working. Now, here's, the, here, here's some magic. Now we're gonna work on some magic. I just connected to Ganache. Just by putting that command, the console started up, the console started up and it, underneath it connected to Ganache for me. Now, all of these accounts, all of these accounts are available to me in this console. All I have to do is type accounts. It even gives me an autocomplete. Brilliant. And there is a list of accounts. Okay. Oh, because I already have a project on my on my on my on my thing. So we didn't create a project yet. So hey, please ignore that. Good question. Yeah, skip the brownie init start. We don't we're not getting into the brownie init stuff yet. Stay with me here, right? Stay with me here. I have some stuff running on my computer. It's not clean, so uh, please ignore that, right? So the Brownie 101 project is active. You don't have an active project right now, okay? 
So I have a list of accounts here, and these are exactly the same accounts here, okay? You can see here the 6413, 6413, okay? Yeah, you don't need to see the Brownie project. So yeah, I apologize because I've got stuff on my computer and all of that, okay? So I apologize. You will have it soon. Okay, it'll be there soon. All right, so um, so I do that. I can do the address thing. I can, I can get the accounts just by typing the accounts. I can look at what type of variable account is. It's a spe special type of variable. It's an iterable. If you know about Python, it's an iterable, right? It's a special class called accounts, okay, right? Um, and it manages accounts, right? So, but I can do Python type of stuff, right? I can do Python type of stuff because it's iterable. I can say accounts zero, and that gets me the first account, right? That gets, I can access the first account, okay? I can do this. I can, I can do a loop for, for n and accounts. Print n. Look at that. All right. There are my accounts, right? I can get access to them. I can loop through them. I can do stuff for them, right? In fact, I don't even have to type the word accounts. I can just type a, and it's the same thing. All right, so A is big. obviously it's just another variable pointing to the same same place in memory for the list, right? So I can say A zero, A three, and you'll see that using the A is a whole lot easier because you're going to be doing a lot of transactions, and you're going to be specifying lots of accounts, and typing accounts gets just ridiculous, right? So that's how Brownie's thinking. The team behind Brownie's thinking usability. Let me make this clean, fun, and easy to use, right? And that's what's happening here, okay? You know, I can get a third account and all that. Um, there is documentation. On, there, there is, uh, you know, a doc, a doc page. It's not easy to use, not easy to easy. Um, and, uh, and then I can convert it to a list. So I say, well, let's say A is a list. I'm going to just say list A. Let's type AL. It's a list, right? There's my list. All right, I can do, I can do, I can do conversions, right? If I need to, right? Now we're going to get into the Ethereum world. Okay, now we're going to get into the Ethereum world. All right. Um, just uh, let me just check on one person here who's in this. Uh, let's see here. Uh, John, are you good? Kostomsky, are you good? Just want to make sure you're right. Okay. So account zero. Account zero is what? Account zero, having an issue with Python. Okay, um, just paste what you have and Hector, Hector maybe will help you, yeah. So account zero is this one that ends with 6413. It has a balance of what? A thousand ETH, right? It has a balance of a thousand ETH. Let's get the balance. I do the balance thing. I specify the, the account and wham, I get the balance. Okay, so is that a thousand? What's why is that number so large? Who can give me an answer? That's way exactly exactly. So that balance is in way right? Absolutely. So uh, what I can do, I can just do, and I'm just doing a little bit of math here. I can just do this divided by ten to the eighteenth, right? And then I get the value in ETH, okay? Well, the Python stuff is stuff you should have installed before the course, right? So um, it's on you to install Python and stuff like that, not to come into the course and say, hey, help me figure out how to install Python. You gotta come into the course because I gotta deliver a course. You should have Python installed, stuff like that. Um, but uh, Hector is here to help you. Like he's a, he's a guru in Python as much as he can, he's gonna help you out uh, with that, okay? So, um, cause I need to move the class forward. I wish I could help you, but I can't. Um, Hector will as much as he can, um, you know. So um, as, as much as you can get done, if not just watch and then come back to this later, All right? So um, I can convert, right? And I get, I get the balance. 
And I see that it con I can confirm with ganache that um, the balance is correct, right? And now I want to list all the balances. And you know, I'm going to be pretty audacious now and say, you know what? I'm going to list all of the all of the balances for n and a, all of the accounts. Print n and balance. Okay. And I get all of the account balances in um, in way. And obviously, if I do this. I get it in ETH. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to transfer money. We're going to transfer stuff. This is very important to understand. I'm going to transfer money. I'm going to transfer 50 way from one account to another account. Okay. I'm going to transfer from account zero to account one. 50 way okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do this just, let me just type this so a zero account zero transfer and you can see i got this autocomplete stuff with a ton of stuff there right i'm gonna say from a1 the from address and the amount okay okay and the amount and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go and do the second this second line again. But all I have to do is hit the up arrow, like in any REPL. I'm gonna hit the up arrow because I already did this second line again, and just hit that hit enter on that. So I'm gonna do the transfer. And this time, what happened? This time we had to pay. We we had to interact with with the um, Ethereum because um, there was a change in the Ethereum state, right? In the ledger, we made a change in the ledger, okay? Before, when we were looking at balances, we were not changing the ledger. Now, when you're changing the balances, we're doing a transfer, that changes the ledger. So I go back and I print out um, the differences again, and I see that there's a, there's a difference, okay? There's less money in the first account. Yeah, the, the Brownie 101 project is not something that we created yet. So you could just ignore that for now. Just follow the commands, right? Just get into get into the brown, uh, the console. You know, the for loop should run very quickly. It should run, it should run under like a, two seconds. Yeah, sorry, Kathy. Yep. Yeah, there's just some residual stuff on my computer that um we will we'll get there and you'll see that Brownie 101 uh, pretty soon. So I apologize. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna remove this 10 to the 18th, right? And you can see the differences in way. You can see now account one got that 50 way. See that dark? So I'm answering your question basically, all right? It's just a rounding thing, all right? So here there's a rounding thing. And if you get down to the way, you can see that 50 there. Yep, okay. All right, so, um, so I transfer 50 way from account zero to, to account one. I go to my ganache, right? I'm gonna go to my ganache and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna go to transactions and I'm gonna see um, some interaction there, okay? I'm gonna see a, a movement of money, okay? I'm gonna see movement of money and then it's, it's mined in a, a new block. Also, I have a new block because I had that transfer, okay? If I go scroll up, I can see the transaction ID FDE here is the same transaction ID here. Okay. All right. We're not using any solidity to connect to the blockchain. We're using, we're not even getting there yet. What I'm showing you is just brownie and a beautiful brownie and a beautiful ganache working together. We're not even getting into the world of smart contracts yet. We will very, very shortly. Okay. Right? We're not constructing any of our smart, own smart contracts yet. We will in a few minutes, probably in about 20 minutes. Okay, I want you guys to get familiar because we got it. Once we get into the smart contract world, we you need to know how to do all of this because you're going to check on smart contracts and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you can see 
you can see um, there here, but what you do see here is uh, the ganache gooey is bad with rounding. Okay, it's bad with rounding. So, so what we'll do is we'll just transfer a larger amount. Okay, we're gonna transfer a larger amount from, but from this time from an A4 to A3. Okay, that's the fifth account. So from A4, I'm gonna transfer ETH. I'm transferring ETH here. Okay, I'm not transferring any tokens. I'm transferring ETH here. Okay, A3 to A3. I'm gonna transfer 50 ETH. So I do 10, so I do, whoops, times 10 to the 18th. Okay, I transfer 50 ETH. Right, and I run that and now I get my balances again. And now I see a noticeable difference in balance. And I go back to my brown, uh, my ganache, and there I see a difference. Okay, so the trans, the, the amount has to be large enough for this UI because the UI is just the UI. It will need to um, round things and whatever. And if you like, look at the source code or whatever, it's rounding and whatever. So ultimately, you want to use this. So in, in some ways, brownie will give you more accuracy than this ganache UI. But you can see now that I move. 50 ETH from here to here uh, just by this one command, okay? And you can actually do the same one command on the real Ethereum chain if you wanted to. It would actually literally, if you have the permission to do that, move ETH across. So, you know, good luck building a trading system with Brownie. Okay, so everybody have that? We didn't get into the byte code stuff. We didn't get into Solidity. Right now it's, there's just an Ethereum chain with accounts, with balances, we're interacting with it, that's it. Um, yeah, did you run this uh, here? Did you run this, Emmanuel? Did you run this? What are you getting? What are, what are your balances? And did you did you uh, did you put this fifty times ten times ten to the eighteenth? Did you change this transfer to to be fifty ETH? This is fifty ETH, not fifty way. Yeah. So that's what you need to do. Make sure you're running that. Run it again. Run it again and then run this here. Okay, run it again and run this again. Okay. Yeah, run this last, last uh, piece of code I sent you. Okay, so here, here's, the, here's the command that you're gonna run, okay? This is it right here. You see it working right here. Okay, you, you got it? What was it? PC slow? Okay, all right, uh, okay. Now what I can do is I can check balances. I can create a piece of code that allows me to check balances across the board, right? Um, and we just did that um, and, and I can change it. Uh, if I add the 10 to the 18th power, I move it to ETH, okay? Okay, um, can you hold on a second? I'm just gonna be back. I just need to take a second here, hold on a second. Sorry, just gonna get some water. Um, okay, and I, I once again I can check on ganache on accounts and transaction tabs and see everything's matching up, right? So, um, okay, all right. So 
Now, if you want to exit the console, type quit. Okay, and that will exit the console. All right. Don't do the control C thing, and that's kind of messy. Be elegant. Okay. Um, now, now we're going to do the folder setup. Okay. Now we're going to do the folder setup, and what you can do is you're just going to create a folder called like Brownie One Hundred One, um, and you're just going to go into that into that folder. Okay. Um, and then you're gonna do Brownie init, okay? What Brownie init does, now we're gonna build a project, okay? Now the goal is, hey, we want a project, we want to code solidity, we want to do stuff, right? I gave you an introduction to Ganache, a quick introduction to what Brownie can do as it interacts with Ganache without the need of a project, without the need of doing any solidity coding and things like that. But now we're gonna move into building a project and deploying it and things like that, okay? So now that's 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 what we're gonna do. Okay. So you're gonna do brownie init. Thank you. You do brownie init. Um, and once you do that, once you do that, you can open up Visual Code just by doing code space dot. Right. So if I just do code space dot, the Visual Code will pop up open for me. Okay. All right. Have that Visual Code open. And you're gonna see a bunch of folders and stuff that Brownie created in that folder, okay? You can see a bunch of stuff there. You don't have to worry about most of what that is for now, uh, but you're gonna see something like this, okay? So never mind this project name, but you'll see a build folder, a contracts folder, interfaces, reports, scripts, tests, and the, you know, the Git stuff, right? So build is basically where when you compile stuff, it's all that, all these artifacts are going into that folder. Okay, so we're not really going to play with that folder. We're not really worried about what's in that folder. It's just these, it's the ABIs and all that kind of binaries and all that kind of stuff get put into that folder. Okay, uh, the folders that we really are going to focus on uh, is the contracts folder um, and the scripts folder. These are the two folders that we're going to be working in. Okay, um, so just make sure somebody. Somebody is not on mute. Can you guys please make sure you're on mute? Because I hear a lot of noise. Okay, great. So um, those are the two folders. The contracts folders, um, yes, there's, they should all be empty, right? The contracts folders uh, is empty. The scripts folder is empty, okay? Those are the two folders that we're going to be focusing on. The contracts folder is to put the Solidity smart contracts that we're building. They go in there. And scripts, we're, we're going to cover a bit, are these Python snippets of code that you write that automate a lot of things for you okay so um we're going to start with some some of the contract stuff then we're going to go to scripts and then we're going to come back to do contracts so what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple contract deploy it play with it and then we're going to i'm going to show you how to create a simple script and then we're going to come back to the erc20 thing that's the kind of like the that's the heavyweight stuff okay so um all right so everybody with me Everybody with me? Yes. Okay, great. Fantastic. This is about to get really interesting now. Okay. It's going to get interesting. And this took me a long time to figure out. So what I'm giving you is like, uh, there's all this blood, sweat, and tears I had to go through to figure uh, a brownie out and all the, you know, all the stuff. Okay. So we're going to create a simple contract. Okay. I have a, I have a gist uh, link for you guys that I can share with you guys. So you don't have to you don't have to type this contract up. You can just copy and paste it. Okay. So we're gonna create a simple smart contract, right? And we're gonna place it in the uh, contracts folder. So you're gonna create a new file in Visual Code. You know you can create a new file, right? So the way to create a new file in Visual Code is just hit this um, here. Just hit this uh, plus button here. Right, create a new file and give it a file name. Just call it um, simplecontract.sol. Give it an extension of .sol. Okay, and just copy and paste from the gist. Just copy and paste the um, contract. Right. So this whole simple contract thing, and I'm going to explain what the contract does in a bit. Um, uh, and you're going to paste it. Whoops, sorry, wrong screen. Let me just paste it here. Show you here. Which 
actually show you on my screen here. I'm going to paste it here. So I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to call it uh, simple contract dot SOL. It's in the contracts folder. I'm just going to copy and paste from uh, the gist, right? And I copy it and I paste it and that's it. Okay. And you just save it. Make sure you save it. Make sure that this white little circle icon is gone. That means it's unsaved. Okay. Okay. So what does this smart contract do? Um, it's very simple. It stores on Ledger on the Ethereum chain or whatever chain this is deployed to um, a value. Okay. That's the state. As you call this a state variable, right? The value on construction of the smart contract, meaning when the smart contract is deployed, the constructor is called. That value's initial value is this string here, blockchain NYC. I can retrieve that value by calling get value, and I can modify that value by calling set value. Which of these two methods would cost gas? Which of these two methods cause a transaction to occur? Absolutely, exactly. So not both, it just set value, okay? Whenever I'm modifying the chain, I'm making use of a change in the state. And when I use the word state as in state of affairs, or, or if you heard of in computer science, the idea of, of a state machine, it moves from one state to another state or condition, it's in one condition into another condition. Whenever you modify the condition, uh, of a, of a, of a, uh, on a chain, then you've got to pay for that. But the reads, the reading is free. You can read as much as you want, okay? So the get value is not going to cost you anything. Set value will cost you something, okay? Anyhow, we're not going to get into gas and all that. That's not our, our main concern today. So um, I have this simple contract. Everybody have this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile it. Okay, so now I go back to my, I go back to my console here. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my console here and I'm just gonna do brownie, brownie compile. Okay, and the reason I use this all is because it recompiles anything that's already been compiled. Okay, and I just find that a cleaner way to do things. Just, you know what, just compile everything anyway. Because it was like, oh, this has already been compiled. It's not going to read. It's not going to compile it again. Um, but I do. I force it a full recompile by doing the double dash all. And I suggest you do that. It's a very clean way. Um, and then we'll see the compiling occur. And you're not going to get these things. You're not going to get these things. What you're basically going to get is just this. It's going to say simple contract has compiled, right? So it's generating build data and the simple contract has compiled, okay? You're not gonna get any of these. You will later, okay? Okay, should be straightforward. Might be a little bit slow on if you have a slower machine, um, but it's straightforward. Any questions regarding that? Are we good? So um, the compilation is done by a tool called Soul C, okay? Which is a compiler. Python calls the compiler. Okay, so if you're familiar with, with Java, you use Java C. If you're familiar with C, it's GCC, right? You use a separate compiler to compile, um, and Python just calls Soul C. So Brownie actually calls Soul C, okay? So Brownie's not doing the compiling. Brownie is facilitating for you to do the compiling so that you don't have to type Soul C and a whole mess of other flags, and then this file, this soul, this dot soul, and that dot soul. Brownie's kind of making it easy for you, okay? Perfect. I, I Raj, you got it. Perfect. Great. Yeah, it might be downloading some Soul C first, right? So, but it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds the first time, 45 seconds to compile. Okay. Once you got it compiled, it's the contract sits in our computer in binary format now, right? So we have the text format of the contract, which is the dot soul file, which we just typed up or pasted in. And then we have the binary version of this sitting in the build folder, you, you're free to explore that if you want. It's a big mess of lots of junk there, right? 
Uh, and now I want to kind of get this smart contract onto Ganache. Let's get it going. So I'm going to go back into my console. I'm going to go back into my console, right? I'm going to go back into my console and I'm back to my console. And now you guys all should see this Brownie 101 project, right? Takes a while. Okay, yeah, we'll give it 30 seconds. No, the code is on on GitHub. I just created this this course literally three hours ago, so four hours ago. So I, I can put it up to I can put it up to GitHub, um, and maybe we'll just do this course again um, in the future. So okay, so um, now we have this up and running. The console's running. I'm connected, like I was connected before. I still have my accounts. Blah blah blah. We did all of that. That's all there. But now I have this variable called simple contract. Now that variable is available to me because of what, what just got compiled, okay? And if I enter, I get this. What is that, Python people? What is that? What are the two brackets? What does two brackets mean in Python? Absolutely, empty list. It's an empty list, right? Because that list contains the contract addresses of, of all of the deployments of this simple contract onto the Ethereum chain. And since we did not deploy it even once, that list is empty, okay? Okay, so um, now what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm in a, a 10 second segue, information about Ethereum transactions. Every Ethereum transaction has a caller, right? Somebody calling that transaction. That's the from address, okay? And there is a to address. If I'm moving money, it's from me to you or from you to somebody, right? If, there, if the to is blank, if there's a from, the caller, but the to is blank, that means to Ethereum, this is a smart contract deployment, okay, right? Yeah. Oh, why is it empty? Is it empty? Did you do? Um, did you do, um, Kathy? Did you open up? Um, did you do this, Ganache GUI? So just do a, just do your networks list. And make sure it's there. If not, if it's not there, add it again. Okay, make sure it's there. And if it's not there, make sure you just try to add it again. Okay, it should be there. All right, and if it's not there, just add it, All right? And the, the command to add it is somewhere here. Okay, that's the command to add it, okay? Okay, great, perfect, so. All right, so um, I'm gonna go back to my here. So remember about transactions. Transactions, there is always a from and to. And when we did the, the transfer, the A0 was the from, the A1 was the to, right? The destination, right? So um, when you deploy a smart contract, there is no destination address. And when Ethereum receives that transaction and sees, oh, there is no destination address, this is a smart contract deployment, okay? That's when it knows that you're pushing a smart contract instead of pushing a transfer transaction, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say smart, no, we sorry, we're gonna say simple contract, deploy. We're gonna deploy this smart contract, okay? We're gonna deploy the smart contract, but we have to pass in a specific parameter. We have to pass it in JSON format, the sender or the caller, or the creator of this smart contract. And it could be any of those five contract addresses that we have, right? It could be any of those five. So we're gonna stipulate here in JSON format is the from, and I'm just gonna say the from is A0, okay? A0 is the contract creator and A0 is the owner of that contract, okay? And that will be important when we get into ERC20s, okay? But now A0 is creating this smart contract called simple, they're creating a version 
of the simple smart contract, right? And the result of it, I want it to be held in this variable called SC. Okay, this is what I want. Okay, now when I hit enter, let me just move the screen forward. Now when I hit enter, I'm deploying the simple smart contract. Okay, I'm deploying this. It deploys, right? So I get a transaction ID, it costs me some gas, blah, 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 okay? I just deployed it. If I do type SC, I can see that this is a contract. It's a specific type of variable that Brownie manages for you. It's a wrapper around a reference to a contract um, on, the, on the Ganache chain, okay? If I just do SC, I can pull up the contract's address. Remember, a smart contract when it's deployed, it has an identifier, it has a location. That's its smart contract <clears throat> address, okay? Just like you have accounts, uh, we, we have these five accounts that have balances. Those are, those are like human accounts. Then a smart contract itself has an account, right? That we just deployed. If I go back to my ganache, if I go to my ganache, I can see right now, there's a transaction where a contract was created. Okay, I can see a contract creation uh, done. And notice here that there is no two. So these other transactions where we did transfers, I moved ETH, remember I moved the 50 away and I moved the 50 um, ETH. These are transactions that have a from and a to. Here I have a from, but there is no to, okay? All right, so um, I do the SC, I can see this small contract address, all right? I can see that in Ganache, all right? Now I'm gonna get value. I'm gonna get value. I'm gonna say SC, get value. Hit enter and there it says blockchain NYC. It went to the Ethereum chain, which is the Ganache chain, looked up the ledge up in the ledger. What's the value of value right now? And send back the response to my REPL. Okay. All right, Layla, good night. So, and uh, Layla means good night. Layla means night. <laughs> Okay, so everybody has that. Okay, now I'm going to modify the chain. I'm going to modify the chain. I'm going to say set value, right? I'm going to say set value. I'm going to say hello world. And that executes a transaction as well. Okay. You cannot update a smart contract. There's no way to update it. Once it's there, it's permanent. It's written in stone. So there's other ways that you can work around. Uh, and we have a class on that coming up taught by somebody else on smart contract up upgradability. It's a whole other science. It's a whole other world. And I'm going to show you on, on Open Zeppelin's webpage when we get there to ERC-20, some of the options they provide for you for upgradability. But right now, this smart contract is not upgradable. Okay. Now, I set this smart contract to hello world. Now, when I say get value, it says hello world. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deploy a second smart contract. I'm gonna deploy a second smart contract. I'm just gonna call it SC2, okay? And now I have two smart contracts. If I say SC2 get value, what is the value that I'm gonna get back? What's the value I'm gonna get back if I say SC2 get value? Exactly. I'm gonna get that blockchain NYC thing because it's a completely different smart contract and it has completely different state. And if I do SC here, get value, I get the hello world, okay? All right, so um, now this all works. I can quit the console. I wanna show you two things. Um, one is a little bit of a script, quick script. Then we're going to get into ERC-20s, pausable, mintable, uh, uh, snapshots, all that kind of stuff, all that good stuff, okay? And if you want to quit, you can quit or you can use, open up multiple consoles, okay? So uh, scripts, all right? Scripts allow me to use some of the commands that I already used in my REPL outside, and store it outside and then call it from my REPL. Okay, let me show you what that means, All right? 
Let me show you what that means, right? So, um, so scripts are basically uh, Python. They're written in Python. They, I can automate tasks, okay? So here's a simple script, okay? Um, you guys can type this, right? And we, we're going to place it inside of this util, in this script folder. You're going to create a file called util. You can call it whatever you want. It's just util, like for utilities, util.py. Util and you're going to type this in from Brownie imports accounts, def test print it works. Okay. No, you could you you don't want to use Jupyter or Anaconda for for this. This is pretty much console based. Yeah, the, I mean Jupyter. I, I recommend all my Python. I have a lot of Python students to not use Anaconda and to, to definitely not use Jupyter. Whole, a whole other set of reasons for that. Okay, so let's do this. Put this in your util into into there. Put this little little script in. Okay, and then go back into your console. Right, you're gonna go back into your console. Right, so you go back to your console, and you're gonna import the script. Okay, you're gonna import the script, and I'm gonna import it here, and I'm gonna see the functions from those scripts are available to me import and I say test and boom, I have access to that function. Not only that, that function has access to the accounts and we're gonna show you how to do that, okay? So here's an example from my Brownie console. I'm able to call a Python script that's sitting outside of the console, right? So that's incredibly powerful. I can automate a lot of stuff in my accounts, in my console. Remember I was doing the for loop with getting all the balances? Well, why don't I just put that into a script? So I put that into a script, all right? Let's say I put that into a script, all right? And I think I have a, uh, yeah, no, I don't have a gist for that. It's too, it's too simple for you guys to, I'm just gonna paste it in here for you guys. All right, so I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save it into my, again, I'll save it into my um, util, util file in my util.py, add another function there. Okay, so I save it there again. So I save this into my util.py. I import again, I've got to do the import again, right? And I call all balances. Okay, so I call all balances, I'm gonna do this here. So I have my util here. I'm gonna put this here, I have this here, all balances. And if I call my all balances function here, I get all the balances. Okay. So I can create incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful scripts here that do all kinds of things for me. And I can just call it for my REPL. I can transfer ETH around and left and right and, and do all kinds of stuff right from Python here. Okay, so Brownie's allowing me to use their API directly. Okay, and then I can call it from here. Okay. Uh, try scripts. Uh, maybe the util is not plural, just util. Did you, did you, um, so maybe what you should do, maybe the older, older versions of Brownie, try to quit from your console. That's why I had you guys quit and then log back in and then do the import again. Okay. So then do the import again and then call all balances. Yep, it was util, not utils. Yep, been there, done that, Kyle. <laughs> so. Sarang, is it working for you? So you quit, go back in, import, run all balances. Okay, now we're gonna go into ERC-20. This is the good stuff, all right? This is where you, you would typically pay $1,000, $2,000 to learn this stuff, okay? I'm gonna dig into the ERC-20 and show you some stuff that you probably have never seen about ERC-20s, okay? 
kind of ganache is going to fall behind the scenes now, right? Because it's going to be so easy to use. We don't even think, we don't even realize it's there anymore, okay? So I just want to make sure everybody's good. Are we good here? I want to get into the ERC-20 stuff. We got about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Any questions? Are we good? Shall I get into the ERC-20 stuff? Good, okay. I, I look around because I have four monitors, so I'm not crazy. So, okay, <clears throat> maybe a little bit, but okay. So ERC-20, what's an ERC-20? You've all heard of it. Some of you probably know what it is, right? Um, okay, perfect, Sarang, great. Um, it's basically a standard, interface standard. If you come from the Java world, you know about interface standards, right? Um, and so, in the world of tokens, tokens were not compatible. How do I move a token from here to there? Well, you have to call this function. And this token said, well, you had to call that function. And the function names were different. Be like, hey, this is crazy. Why don't we just have a single set of ways to like manipulate a token, right? It's well-defined function names or method names. And that standard became known as ERC-20, okay? So these are the key methods in the ERC-20 standards. These are the only methods in the ERC-20 standards. People are confused. They add all these other things, but there are no other methods in the ERC-20 standards besides these six, okay? All the other ones are extensions, right? There's total supply, right, which is the total supply of tokens that this ERC smart contract holds, the balance of, which tells you the balance of a specific address, and transfer, which moves, moves uh, money around moves tokens around not ether but tokens okay and then there's these other delegation methods that allow you to to allow someone else to move tokens on your behalf or receive tokens on your behalf and things like that we're not going to cover that right now we're going to cover these three simple things all right total supply which is the total pool of tokens available right the balance of which is what the balance of a specific person or a specific account. And how do I transfer between two accounts? I want to move some tokens around. How do I do it? I use the transfer method. Once you understand that, the ERC-20 should be straightforward. But then there are the extension methods. There's the name. Hey, I, I want to have a name. This token needs to have a name. It needs to have a symbol, right? BTC, you know, D-O-G-E. Those are symbols, not of tokens, but cryptos. But that, those are symbols. And then you can have dis, a different amounts of decimals because if you took Hector's class, you're gonna remember that there are no decimals in Solidity. So you have to simulate the idea of decimals with extra integer positions. I'm not gonna get into that, but these are extension methods, right? These are methods that are commonly used and pretty much every ERC-20 has these methods. Right, and then there's additional capabilities that ERC-20s can have, like they could be mintable, meaning you can have an ERC-20 that has a total supply of a million tokens and never be able to create more. Unless you make it mintable, then you can increase the supply of tokens in that ERC-20. You can burn tokens, burnable, so therefore you allow tokens to be burned in, a, in, a, in that ERC token. So that means it's burnable. You could pause it. You can pause a token. What does that mean? It means that you nobody can transfer anything anymore. You, you stop the ability to transfer because you got some problems. Somebody's hacking it, stealing money. So you pause it, right? And you could take snapshots of the token at, at any given point in time. Say, I want to store snapshots uh, with the, that might be useful for voting in DAOs and things like that. Well, wait, we're going to only, we're only, we're only going to vote for this and we need a snapshot of the ERC-20 token and blah, blah, blah. And it's proof of voting, proof of this, proof of that. You take snapshots and those snapshots are stored on Ledger. And there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch more. Okay. So, um, but we're not going to write all of this ERC-20 stuff ourselves. That's like a whole eight hour class ourselves, right? What we can use is this open Zeppelin contract wizard where we can build an ERC-20 smart contract in under 10 seconds, okay? In under 10 seconds. I'm gonna to go to this link. I'm gonna to go to this link. I'm gonna go here. Here's my smart contract. I'm gonna put ERC-20. I'm gonna call it uh, BNYC token. I'm gonna give it a symbol 
BNYC, and I'm going to say there's going to be 100 of them. I'm going to select, I want it to be mintable, burnable, plausible. I want to have snapshots, and I'm done. I just copy and paste this into my contracts code. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a minute to do this, but I just want to show it to you that how, that's how easy it is. Okay, I did it under, I think, under 10 seconds. All right, so you're going to go here. You're going to go to the smart contract wizard. Okay, you're going to go to the smart contract wizard. You're going to see this. I gave you the link. It's in the chat. And these are the things, these are the settings that you're going to put in. Mintable, burnable, plausible snapshots. You're going to call it BN, BNYC token. You're going to give it the symbol BN, BN, BNYC. And you're going to pre-mint 100 of them. Normally, the number of tokens is much larger. It's like, you know, a billion or whatever. But we're just going to work with 100 for now, okay? Now, the question regarding upgradability, I, I forget who asked that question. Who asked the question regarding up, upgradability? Okay, Sandra, so you see here, upgradability here. You have, the, you have options to make this smart contract upgradable. Let me show you what happens to the smart contract code the minute you make it upgradable. Look at that. You get all kinds of other capabilities there, right? There's all these other things that you have to learn. Um, and it creates what's called a proxy. You have the idea of a proxy. So you have a smart contract that actually calls another smart contract. And the smart con the proxy, that's the proxy. That one doesn't change. But the one that it calls, which is your real smart contract, can't change. So it's just pointing to a different one, right? So that's how it works, okay? But we're not going to get into that. But if you're concerned about upgradability, this is where you would look into, right? And it requires a little bit of, of time to figure out, okay? All right, so you're welcome. So does everybody have this? You have that? You have that? If you have that, if you have that, then what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna take this code, right? You're gonna basically take this code here, sorry. You're basically going to take this code here, mintable, burnable, plausible, snapshot. You're just going to copy this. You're going to copy it. And you're going to create a new file. Right? You're going to create a new file here under the contracts folder. And you're just going to paste it in. Just paste it in. And you're done. You have an ERC20 token. <clears throat> put whatever name you want. Like, if you don't like this name, put, you know, Put Kyle token and you know KYLE as do whatever you want. I won't mind. Put Sandra token, whatever you want. Sandra token is fine, whatever you want. Okay. So this could be descriptive. This is typically like three, four characters long. Okay. So once you have that, you're gonna I'm gonna show you an error condition. And then you're gonna resolve it. You're gonna you're gonna have this, you paste it. And you're going to compile and you're going to get errors. I just want to make sure you guys all get the same errors. And we're going to resolve those errors very quickly. Getting errors? Errors? Okay. Yes. Parse error means that there's a typo. Okay, you probably have a typo there. Make sure you fix the parse error. That's nothing to do with, so the kind of errors you're gonna get is that you have libraries that are missing. Okay, there's gonna be libraries that are missing. Specifically, specifically, because you are importing here open Zeppelin libraries, but you don't have them on your computer. So it's looking for these locally. Okay, so we're gonna have to bring those libraries in. Okay, that's one. Two, we're using this shorthand, this at thing here. It actually represents a longer path folder structure. And for shorthand, we're just gonna use the at, at thing here, but Brownie doesn't recognize it. So two simple steps that we do to make sure Brownie, one, retrieves the, the Open Zeppelin base files for us and then understands this shorthand way of referring to the, the path, okay? So the way that we do that, step one of two, 
you do this, Brownie PM install open Zeppelin. Okay, kind of like when you do pip install, well, Brownie has one too. Okay, and I'm gonna paste that right here. Yeah, so usage for Brownie it, compile is compile dash dash all. Okay, I just pasted the install. This will pull down the open Zeppelin files, version 4.3.2, which is um, the, the latest. Okay. The second thing that you need to do, once this is done, this will take a little bit of time. It's gonna pull down, you know, 10 megs or whatever, 20 megs of stuff. The second thing you need to do is you need to create a Brownie config file. Okay, you need to add this remapping thing. This is where you're saying, hey, look, this whenever you see this at open Zeppelin, just assumes it means this fuller thing here. Okay. And this entire Brownie config file I've already done for you. Guess what? It's in a gist, and I'm going to paste that gist. Just copy that whole file and paste it and put a config file in your root of your project. Okay. So it goes into the root of the project. And then we're going to dig into this ERC20. Okay. We're going to play with it. We're going to pause it. We're going to start it. We're going to mint. We're going to burn. All that kind of good stuff. Okay, there's the gist for the Brownie config file. Make sure you grab it. Now, after you did those two things, now you should compile and your compile should be successful. Give you guys 30 seconds. Sure, no problem. Okay, you don't even have to type anything here except this command, which I already pasted for you. And this config file is in the gist I just pasted. Okay, this gist I pasted is the entire config file, the YAML file, this entire YAML file. Just dump it in there. Okay. Yep, there we go. Now you pull down Open Zeppelin. Now you have access to Open Zeppelin right in front of you, right, right in your hands. All that good stuff that Open Zeppelin has, ERC721, ERC1155, DAO governor contracts, all that kind of stuff. All that's there. You know, you don't have to code an ERC20 for yourself. Okay. Henry, are we good? Kyle? Sandra? Sarang? Fed. All good. All right. Good. I love to see this. Great. Perfect. Okay. Great. So now we get the compile working. We're going to go back to our Ganache console. Okay. We're going to go back there. We're going to go back and we're going to deploy the token. We already deployed the simple, the, the simple contract is no different. We're going to deploy now. I've got to go back here and quit here, make sure I've got compile working, right? <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to deploy the BNC token, BNYC token. Okay. And this time it's going to, the from is just going to be account number, the, the third account, account number two, just to, just to make everybody feel good. Right. So deploy from A2. This is important. Remember who is the caller. This is the caller. This is the creator of the account, okay? Now, why is that important? Because these methods can only be called by the owner. So these only, only, only owner modifiers. So therefore it's only A2 that can call these functions later not A1, okay? And we'll see that, okay? So this is why for you to remember that you, you put A2 here, or if you put A3 here, whatever else put in here, remember that that's the creator. I hit enter, it's deployed. And now I have, ladies and gentlemen, an ERC20 token on my Ganache, okay? It's there. I can now say BNYC, B, BNYC dot, and I can get a whole mess of things. First thing I want to do, what's my total supply, bro? 
All right, my total supply. That's my total supply. Obviously, if I do this, divided by 10 by 18, I have 100 tokens. I minted 100 tokens, right? That was my original mint. My pre-mint was 100 tokens, right? That's my total supply, okay? So I get my total supply. Now I'm gonna mint. I want you guys to put this mint here specifically, okay? I'm gonna mint this here, okay? I'm gonna mint this. And this illustrates a point. I'm gonna paste it in for you guys. I try to mint. The from is A0. The from, the caller is A0. The call is not authorized to mint. The only person that's authorized to mint is A2. Okay? A, only A2 can mint. Because A2 created the contract and is the owner. Okay? And when I hit enter, I get an exception. Okay? That's an expected exception. Okay? Contradiction in terms, but yeah. All right? So that is the caller is not the owner. So therefore, they cannot call. They cannot mint. Okay? All right. Yeah, the last time we called set, we didn't have from because there was no only owner modifier there. Anybody could set value there. Okay, David, anybody in that contract? So in that contract there, which is, this is a great question. There is no restriction of who can call this. In this contract, we say only, only owner can call this. Okay, therefore the from is necessary. In this case, there is no need to put a from because everybody is allowed to set the value. Whether that's a good thing or bad thing is a separate question, okay? All right, now if I just modify this to A2, A2, I hit enter. Now this, that, that minting works. I go back to BNYC, total supply. And I have a few extra tokens there now. It has to come from some address, right? No, it doesn't, at that point, it doesn't matter what address it comes from. It doesn't even have to come from, you know, like a, a from address. I said transactions require a from, right? That's not even a transaction. Okay, so, um, Um, okay, hold on a second. So actually, you know what, um, David, I misspoke. Let me come back to your question in a bit. I, I need to think about that, okay? Because um, I think it's a valid question. Um, so let me come back to that question. I just want to move along because we have 14 minutes and I want to get to the, 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 there's about 10 more slides, the minting, the burning, the, the, the pausing and the snapshots, okay? And I'll come back to you. So I think it's a valid question. I'm trying to rush, I apologize. Um, can't someone rewrite the caller's coding? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what that means, uh, Sonia. Can you clarify that? I mean, the code once it's deployed, you cannot modify that code, right? So um, you can write code to, to change who the owner is. You can write code to change who the owner is. That code doesn't exist right now in our smart contract. It doesn't exist, but it can. Okay. Okay. Great. So. Let me get through the minting. Um, uh, so I got the minting. I can mint 25 tokens. Now I'm going to transfer tokens. Okay. I'm going to transfer tokens. I'm not transferring ETH. I'm transferring tokens. Okay. BNYC transfer. A thousand. Okay. From. A1, okay, let's try this, All right, let's try this. And this should be an error condition as, as well. Why will this be an error condition? Why will this be an error condition? I'm transferring a thousand tokens from A1 
Exactly, exactly, right? So A0, which is the, uh, sorry, um, A2, which is the owner of the account, has all of the tokens at this time. Okay, no other tokens, the tokens have not been allocated. They're all entirely owned by the owner, which is A2. So this is an attempt, this is an attack. This is a, a hack attempt. The A1 is trying to move tokens to A2 and that's gonna fail, okay? So that's gonna fail. So if I say A2, if I say A2, then this will be successful, okay? Right, so I moved a thousand tokens. All right, I moved a thousand tokens, not ether, tokens. Okay, different thing. Okay, and now here with A2 here, that will be successful because A2 holds all of the um, tokens and nobody else has any tokens. Notice here though, notice here that um, you can't see it here, but if you go to the ERC20 implementation, the only owner modifier does not apply to transfer because anybody can transfer it to anybody as long as they own it, okay? So let's just move along, right? Uh, I can get the balance of a specific account in terms of how many tokens they have by just by saying balance of, okay? Remember the three, fun the three functions, right? Total supply, balance of, and transfer. Those are the key functions in an ERC-20. So I'm gonna say, well, let me see what the balance is of A0, A1, and A2. And that's their token balance, okay? That's their token balance. Okay, now, Next thing I'm gonna do, so you should have an idea of total supply, transfer and balance up. The intricacies of this, there's maybe a little bit more to learn, but you basically got it all here, okay? There's not much more to do here. Pausing, we can pause the contract. All I do, and I don't know why a lot of smart contracts don't use this, it's available from Open Zeppelin, but they don't have it because they think like they don't know about Open Zeppelin. It's just weird. Oh, they know about it, but they don't use it. So I pause it. I pause the contract. Now, when I do a legitimate transfer, I do a legitimate transfer, I can't. The contract's paused. So if, if, if I'm in a hack, the first thing I'm gonna do is pause that smart contract. Okay? So first thing I'll do is pause, okay? so. I can do a from, or so this should be a from there, okay? So um, it probably puts in that the fact that it's the owner that's making the call by default. Maybe Brownie does something like that, but you do put in a from. So if I put in the wrong from, uh, A0, A1, I can't even call it, okay? So I think when you don't put it from it, it puts it, it injects in a zero or something like that by default. That was Brownie's doing what Brownie's doing. Okay. So, and that probably is the same answer to David's question, right? So the 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 the, um, the takeaway here is now uh, any movement of tokens is forbidden, right? That can't you can't that can occur. And then I can I can obviously I can unpause this, right? And I can unpause it. And then once I un unpause it. I can go back to doing a token transfer. Yeah, so it defaults probably the contract owner or it defaults A0 maybe, you know, I, I don't know. So, or, or yeah, the contract owner. So um, Brownie does that, but normally any other toolkit will not do that. Normally Ethereum will not allow that, right? So that's not an Ethereum behavior, it's a Brownie behavior, okay? So we see pause and unpause. I can pause and then I can unpause and then I, a transfer can occur, right? A legitimate transfer can occur. Okay, let's look at snapshots. Okay, snapshots. Snapshots are great for like voting and you know audit trails and all that kind of stuff. So I, I say, hey, look, uh, I've got a total supply. This is my total supply of tokens, right? One, whatever, whatever, 25, right? Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a snapshot at this point. So I do a snapshot. Every time I do a snapshot, 
a snapshot has um, an identifier associated with a sequential number, snapshot one, snapshot two, snapshot three, right? So um, I do a snapshot, right? Um, and I can pull up the, um, the ID just by the events. So I get back the events. We're not covering Ethereum events here, but this is the ID of the snapshot, okay? I have a snapshot that stores the state of that ERC-20. It stores all of the balance. It takes a snapshot of all everybody's balances and the total supply. I'm just messing. I'm just showing you the total supply right now because it's just easier to show you. It takes a snapshot of everything in that ERC-20 contract, balances and total supply. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this, the total supply by some a ridiculously large amount of, of, of num uh, number, or number of tokens, right? I'm just going to modify that supply. I'm just going to copy this piece of code here and share it with you guys. So you don't have to type this in here. That transaction is, uh, is a variable that if I delete, if I exit the console, that variable is gone. Okay, but you can reconstruct that um, using, um, you know, you can, you can reconstruct that uh, transaction um, through it, if you have the transaction ID, that the transaction hash, you can reconstruct that object. Okay, so here I'm gonna mint, I'm gonna mint, all right, so I'm gonna mint here a bunch of, <clears throat> a bunch of tokens. Okay, I'm minting a bunch of tokens here. All right, the minting works. Now I say, I look at my total supply, it should increase by the amount that I just minted, right? I do see that increase. I see this 25 here, okay? But I wanna see what the total supply was at snapshot one. When I took the snapshot and I say BNC1, BNYC total supply at, and I specify a snapshot number. I only took one snapshot. So this, the number one is that first snapshot. And I see that it's the original first snapshot, the total supply amount. No, there's no rollback. No, there's no, with this smart contract, there isn't. Is there a, a use for that? Maybe, I'm not sure where, but, um, but in, this, in this case, there's not. Indexing starts at one, correct. Okay, so if I do another snapshot, okay, you can see there that's the, that that snapshot is index number two, and if I retrieve it, that's the current total supply. Okay, and if I mint again, and I mint one more time, that's my new. Uh, total supply, snapshot one, snapshot two. Uh, can you list all snapshots? Um, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So um, yeah, enumerating things in smart contracts is difficult. Right. There's not a lot of ways to enumerate because it takes up, it takes up, uh, it takes up. Um, but um, let's see here. Yeah, th there may be a way to do it, but um, obviously you can do it. Obviously, you know you can do it. You can do it this way, right? So you can do it here if you knew if you knew your. Um, if you knew the uh, the highest snapshot ID, right? You can obviously do something like this, right? Uh, but you need to know that, right? So you can do that, but we do, I, I think there may be a method to pull that out, the, the, the current index number. Uh, I just don't remember that. It's, it, it, I, I do remember seeing it in the smart contract. I just don't remember the method to pull it out. Yeah, okay. Um, any questions? We're out of time. It's it's eight p.m. I need to get dinner, and all that. Yeah.
All right, guys. Thank you so much. See you at our next event soon. Have a great night, guys. Yes, <laughs> sure. Uh, recording available by later tonight, maybe tomorrow morning. You know, it just depends on stuff I got to do. And then um, we'll get we'll get it out pretty soon. Yep. Take care, guys. Have a great evening or a great morning, wherever you are, or a great afternoon. Bye.